اذا متواصلون معكم في هذه الحلقه من برنامج نتواصل لحمايتكم الان نرحب بالصحفي الاسباني السيد فيليبي باسولا اهلا بك استاذ فيليبي هلو ثانك يو فيري ماتش فيرست اوف اول ام غانا اسك يو ميبي ذا فيرست كويستشن از واي ديد يو كام هير ان موصل ويل ان ذس تايم اكزاكتلي ويل ان ان ذا لاست فيو ويكس ان ذا لاست مونث اكشلي I didn't saw many information or at least information enough about Mosul how was how was going on how was the situation here probably because all the media attention was focusing Aleppo, Aleppo. in Syria so I realized that there were more there was a need of more journalists here for trying to spread what was going on here because for my international experience uh, when media is not on the ground or when media is not putting too much attention to what's going on uh, the only people affected by that in the worst way are civilians what they are suffering mm-hmm. and the percentage of the casualties increased because now the appearance of media around mm-hmm. that is good well uh, you know we are talking in our show about the protection the protection may be in general meaning or in a specific meaning uh, in your opinion what what does it mean the protection you as a journalist how did you see or how do you see the uh, protection well uh, as a journalist for me protection it's a uh, it's, it's a quite quite uh, strong responsibility because for me the best protection you can have so far is like having good information when you are in conflict zones or in a war situations i guarantee you that there is misinformation all around there are rumors uh, of course there is good media bad media good professional bad professional uh, you can find everything but having really good information or proper and accurate information is really important so the media we are facing nowadays a challenge of providing trustable information at the right time and that is going to be accurate so we have to be aware that it's not important to be the first one to spread the news but to be the first one to tell the truth mm-hmm. that that's why it's really important So does media present the meaning of the, of the protection as it is meaning and protection is quite related to media because the role of media is to provide good information to be reliable into the information they provide so media could be a good resource for protections in terms of information if that information is good of course mm-hmm. so uh, the next question is how can media play the the positive role uh, according to the protection you know sometimes media plays the negative roles right uh, the media it's when we call media is a huge industry we're talking worldwide um it's really important that we go like reliable sources uh, media need to be accurate need to be trusted and at the same time need to be on the ground for longer time that they really what normally we understand the news is on the ground so normally we go like for example in the case of Mosul we go like one month of the offensive and everybody was here then things were start to slow down but the civilian were suffering but Mosul was not in the news anymore that mean that the situation is over mm-hmm. it's all the way around it's probably worse so media need to be in the place a longer time to realize and to make sure that everything is going to be alright. Mhm. That is good. So you are talking about the media and the ground. So do you think that media which is not on the ground presenting the missing news or some news are wrong or how? Well, personally I do I do believe that there is it, it, it's, it's a huge need to be working the media outside of the ground and inside the ground mm-hmm. they need to work together for an easy reason normally when you're working on the ground you are able to tell the truth or to be to have really accurate figures or the experience that you are living but with the amount of information that we're demanding nowadays probably i can know very well what's going on in near the front line of Mosul mm-hmm. but i know I'm not going sure who is going to be in the north front or in the south or in Erbil. I'm going to miss some information because I cannot be everywhere. So I need some backup from the people is not on the ground to have a overall view of how is the situation. So it's really important that we need both the people on the ground and people looking from a little bit farther. Mm-hmm. But we need both to combine them to have the whole picture. Mm-hmm. So uh, do you think that what you are doing now you are as a journalist 
help uh, to protect people either inside Mosul or outside? Well, what I'm here, uh, what I believe my work is valuable is for two reasons. Mm -hmm. Is to provide the international audience of the right knowledge to understand what's going on and to make a decisions about how are things good, uh, how, how things are doing or how is the situation. As an independent uh, reporter, uh, I can tell the truth. I can be in a rush, but not being in a rush, but I can be independent, so I can tell what's going on for sure. Uh, and then it's providing information for the people that they only know the big headlines and there is no, they, they, they don't know the story behind those headlines or they don't know the character because they maybe they are not popular but they are the human beings that need help. So I think that my work is trying to fill up those gaps that sometimes the big media, they're mm -hmm. not covering. So you are trying to fill the gaps and to, to uh, send your message. So does the world know what is going on in Mosul? D they know, uh, but normally they only get the headlines about the action and not and a little bit less of the consequences mm -hmm. and not and anything in the middle so we got news about the war and we got news about the refugees or the displaced people but we don't know much about what's going on in the middle of those process and after that so probably when the offense is over uh, it's going to be the news over here telling what's going to be happening with those people that they cannot return home because the houses have been destroyed or they have been not having education for a year or two years. So so that that's a problem. So media, sometimes the big media, it's only focusing in the big points and right. nobody's what is in the middle after that. Mm -hmm. You know, our main point is the protection. Mm -hmm. What is the importance of the pro protection, as you see, as a journalist, as a European journalist? The protection is like, for me, is that you get a clear information mm -hmm. for a source that you relied that you are able to pass this information to help you in the different stage of your problem. For example, because my experience, every single time there is a conflict, there is people displaced, people they have to move. So for me, there will be like three different of levels of protections. It's not the same information what you need when you are siege in a city and then you cannot leave. It's not the same protection or the information you need when you are traveling to escape. From that for that war dangers, and you not the same information when you are settled in a place and you are living safe, but you're not living in good conditions. Mm -hmm. So in every single of these stages, you need different. You need to provide people with different information, so they can rely on that and they can have some expectation about what is the next step they have to 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 take. But you know, uh, Mr. Philippi, the problem now is that a lot of people inside Mosul, uh, they are unreachable. So how we can get our message to them? That that that's a really really huge problem because it's no matter how good or bad is the information, if you cannot get the information across, if you get a really good plan to explain people how to take how they can, can storage food, how they can be traveling safely, how they can be aware of the dangers, uh, that's really good. But if you cannot get the message across, it's useless. So. Uh, we need to push, everyone needs to push to get the message across and rely in every single media form that we have, text forms, Facebook, online, whatever, and voice to voice, face to face, is mm -hmm. the more reliable source that you can find. Trust your neighbor, trust your cousin, trust your relative to provide you with that information. Mm -hmm. And you are informed. I mean, the, the, sh the shame of all of that is that we could avoid some things providing good information if the people have the, the knowledge, they probably could store food for a while, so they don't have to go out to the market mm -hmm. and get the risk of, of, of anything happens. No. So, yeah, trying to message across is the most important. So it's as important as how is the quality of the message. Mm. Uh, how people in the world can protect themselves by themselves? Well, it's... In uh, your opinion. It is really, it's really difficult because nobody is prepared for anything like that. Normally, you don't get a training for prepare for a bombing or for, mm -hmm. or for becoming a refugee. You don't get any preparation or training for that. Right. So it's really difficult. Um, but, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, in my opinion, as a reporter in war zones, uh, I know it's really difficult. 
Uh, I totally understand that for children it's going to be something really difficult to afford. But what I do personally is like try to keep to keep down myself, to be to be quiet, calm, to be calm, uh, try to stay away from any place going to be dangerous, and try to think the safest way to do things. I mean, like try to stay calm so you can think a little bit better have good information and try to be as far as you can for a place that's going to, going to be safe for you. Mm -hmm, that's good. Well, so can you tell us uh, some stories which you saw in your uh, during your work as a journalist that people protect themselves by themselves? Well, it's in the uh, war exactly. Um it is quite common that the the human beings get along to together well, when they are in the same need of suffering, so normally people used to help each other in, in Ukraine, when they go, people fleeing their houses because they're shelling, uh, they were helping each other. So making a space in bunkers, supporting each other, giving food, giving shelter. Uh, at the end, we are all human beings. And in those situations, the best source I have seen is relying on the people in the same condition you are. Uh, there are so many examples, it's difficult to focus on just one. Um, but yeah, it's people helping each other is something really important in, in those groups because nobody by itself or is really tough by your, by yourself. You you can you can make it alone. I mean it's way easier. It's no way it's never is easier, but it's it's easier if, if you can help. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the last question. We as a media, how we can or can we play the role of uh, showing people the way of protection, protect themselves in the war, especially in Mosul. The role in, in Mosul... Uh, uh, I'm talking about the role in, of media, exactly. Media. Mm -hmm. The media... I'm not going to be tired to repeat in this. Mm -hmm. I mean, sensationalism is alright for the media, but it's not the only thing we need to be covering. Mm -hmm. So, I think that we need to have accurate information keeping ourselves on the spot, not trying to be the first, but the most accurate about the information. Mm -hmm. So it's not important that you tell whatever you think, but tell that something that you know is true uh, and stay longer on the ground. So accuracy, keeping a balance between how fast you are telling that and, sp and spreading that message and being longer on the ground. So you make sure that everything is quiet and safe. <تصفيق> نعم إذن في ختام هذا اللقاء نشكر الصحفي الإسباني السيد فيليبي باسولا أشكرك جزيل الشكر بذلك نكون قد وصلنا إلى ختام هذه الحلقة من برنامج نتواصل لحيماتكم تحية لكم وإلى اللقاء